Hello YouTube, and welcome to episode 43 of the Rise of Icelandic Football here at HK. It's Damien as always, and a welcome back for another episode that is hopefully more upbeat than the last one. If you watched episode 42 before we've come here, you know it was a quite a bitter end um, to how we've ended an episode. We're quite upset, and we're quite annoyed um, that it's happened to us again, that how we've gone in the Champions League, we've played so well, and then got knocked out in the group stage yet again for another consecutive year. And it's the way, the manner of how we're losing has not been great. However, um, the stream was fantastic after that. Everyone interacted, got my spirits up, saying, you know, you keep the grind going and don't be too disheartened. It's Iceland, you know, you're not going to win the Champions League in, in the near future. It's a long grind and it's true. So hopefully a bit more of an upbeat episode. We just honestly, we thought we had a chance against Everton. We should have beat Everton in that first leg. It doesn't matter. We're not going to reflect on that too much. Obviously, I've got to tell you what happened in the last couple of games that you obviously didn't get to see on YouTube. I'm um, in the Champions League, don't worry, we're out. You would have imagined that we would have lost to Barca um, at the new camp. Yeah, we did. Don't worry. It's okay. We'll get to it in a second, though. Um, as you can see here on the club screen, I did say we've got to start selling the plates like Steven and that, and I told you that Steven was playing absolutely trash in the Champions League. We're going to sell him. We're going to start with Steven first because he's here as a key player, which means he's still here after the transfer window is over. Um, Steven looks sensational, doesn't he, right? But we know that he didn't perform too well in the Champions League last season. Um, what happened with Steven was this. It was, I'm going to sell you, but I'm only going to sell you for your release fee. We rejected 14.75 mil in the transfer window, not this one, just gone the one before, on deadline day from Atletico Madrid. And I thought, not a problem, we're going to get the same thing. Steven also arced up, right? And he was like, no, nah, I want to leave to go join Monaco. At the stage, Monaco were interested. And then it was like, no, nah, I want to dream, I want to leave to join um, Red Bull Salzburg um, because they've got a lot of money and you know they're a bigger club than you. And I said, okay. So he wants an offer from RBL or Monaco or Barca or someone of that sort of nature for him to go. Um, with that in mind, I said, no, I'm not going to sell him for 30 mil. Um, we're on stream and I'm like, look, we're not getting the bids in at the moment. Everyone's interested, but no one's bidding for him. What do we do? So we transferred this in 30 million. You want to know what happened then? Um, Monaco offered like eight, I think it was. Barca and um, PSG and that just like, meh, you know, the interest waned and in the end they didn't. And then we only got offers from Villarreal and Porto who, he wasn't too interested in Villarreal, but Porto in the end, he, he was interested, he wanted to go, right? But only eight mil bids. The best bid we got was eight mil up front, 12 mil total, and I'm pretty sure that was the Porto bid as well. Um, so by transfer listing him, he didn't get the interest that he was in before the transfer period. And also we didn't um, get an offer that was sufficient of him. So what happened after the transfer period is he gave me a message saying, look, I'm happy with how the, the squad's been strengthened, and we'll get to transfer in a second. Um, I'm happy to stay. Um, we to offer him a new contract. Obviously, the new contract, um, he was unhappy because he still wanted that move to RBL, even though they were interested in him. And then a couple, um, a few days um, later, or maybe it's a week now from now, um, he came back and said, look, RBL aren't interested in me anymore. No one's interested in me anymore. I'm happy to stay at the club. So we, quite frankly, just went straight in and said, yeah, we're going to sign you to 2029. I am happy with that. 2029 with this guy, he is sensational. Look at him, and he's going to be a star man for us. I'm just hoping that in the Champions League, as we can go to the um, Continental there, eight games at a 6.95, and you've got to remember the first two or three games that he played in the Champions League were qualifying games, um, and then the first group stage game against Barca, where he had a stormer, and he had two stormers there of about eights, right? And then the rest of it was that poor, including a couple 6.2s, and we dragged him at half time, and the Barca game, I reckon, on stream, he was pretty poor. And it just looked like a person that didn't want to be here. Um, now being obviously very happy at the club, no current concerns, um, apart from struggling um, with Crespo, who we had did run through, I think, in an episode previously, but we will run through Crespo again. He's still here, and he looks fantastic, doesn't he? Um, playing, as a, he was playing as a roaming playmaker, he goes, he bombs forward, he scores goals. I would love his fitness to be better, but apart from that, Steven is the goods. Um, in terms of what else happened on the stream, is we went through... Um, these two games here, we obviously knew we were going to get beat. We lost the Barca 4-2, unlike when we were 2-0 up at home, and then lost the Barca, which was obviously on YouTube a couple of episodes ago. We were 4-0 down, I'm pretty sure, and then we just went to um, a counter system and just, you know, well, we didn't go to a counter system. We played on the counter system. We went to the 4-2-3-1 fluid, and we scored two goals. So maybe we should have stayed with that. Um, then into we were leading. Um, we then went 1-1. We then were leading 2-1, and then once again, typical HK fashion. We go concede late. We then concede two late goals, and we lose 4-2. Just typical of how we go in the Champions League against the big boys. We go ahead and then go and lose. Um, really need to fix that. Obviously, in friendlies, we started playing a new tactic. We've played a new tactic since then all the way through, um, and because of the transfer we've made is the reason why we've done this and also with Stephen staying is we've changed it slightly. We haven't changed it too much, but we've changed it slightly. Um, 
You might see a few names that aren't in the starting 11 go, oh, hang on a second, Damien, what are you doing? But we'll explain that in a second as well. As you can see, um, the friendlies didn't start off too great. You know, 2 1 against a side I've never heard of, a couple of conceding goals, not the best performance here in the 2 0. Um, but the boys really have grown into the tactic now and really looking the goods. And we'll obviously just won the League A Cup again. Um, we're going to have the Champions Cup, which is the Community Shield here today as well as one of the games. Um, but we have to get into the transfers, don't we? Um, we're going to get into the transfers, and then I'm going to show you why we haven't signed certain players in certain areas, like I said I probably was going to do in the last episode, and you'll see why. But these are the transfers we've made, and you go look at that and you go, well, you we haven't spent too much, but we haven't needed to, really. Um, in terms of the outs, because no one really wanted to leave, we didn't sell anybody. We've got a lot of loan players out, and as you can see, Ivan has been loaned out straight away. Um, we've got to start with Ivan first. Um, Ivan was offered to me um, by his agent saying, look, um, I'm on a free, I think I would be a decent, you know, I have a player with a lot of potential. And I was like, usually I don't look at players like this, but then when I saw he was wanted, he was wanted by like um, FLA, SEP, you know, all the uh, big Brazilian clubs. And I was like, oh, maybe he's just someone we could. Looked at him, um, no one needed a left back. We haven't brought a left back in. That's the one person that we haven't brought in. We'll talk about that one in a second. Um, looked at his stats and said, yeah, left back, look, he's got decent dribbling, not bad. If we can work on his crossing, his crossing's probably a little bit low at 20. But, you know, he might be all right. He's got good determination. He'll grow. He's got decent physicals. Um, let's see what he's like. I'm going to take a punt on him. Um, I didn't have enough time to scout him because obviously all these people had contract offers on him. So I just gave him a contract as a hot prospect, and he accepted our contract, and he's coming to the club, and unfortunately for us, he's not really that good, is he? Um, apparently he's consistent, and he's performing decently well on loan. If he actually grows the three stars, he can maybe find himself a place at the club, but I highly doubt that. The thing is, though, if he actually grows the three stars, I have him probably on a free. We'll probably sell him on for profit. This one here is an absolute bargain. Roberto Carvalho we looked at a long time ago. Um, when I say a long time ago, it would have been a couple of transfer windows ago when I tried to sign him on a free. Um, instead, um, who was that? I'm tempted to say it was Braga. Um, Vit, actually. Um, in this period here, um, triggered a release fee. Uh, release fee, I'm, I'm sorry, an extension on his contract. So we weren't going to get him on a free. This time they couldn't do that, and we got Robert on a free. Um, we then paid the 21k that it was to get him here right now instead of waiting for him. Um, and Robert just looks like a very good youth prospect striker. Um, obviously got good finishing with composure and very good um, um, physicals in most areas apart from his stamina and his natural fitness. Um, at 18, you expect that all to grow really well and all that to grow. He's played a couple of times for the first team in the um, cup. Um, one of his promises is that he played cup games. Um, I did play him a little bit in the um, in a couple of these cup games, but I'm thinking for the whole of the um, FA Cup, so to say, in Arsenal, he'll start and he'll play. I want to get on to Brata last, and he was obviously the person we signed for the most money. Um, and Brata was one person on the stream that everyone was like, wow. How did we sign him for 2.7 mil? Because he had a release fee. Um, I'm pretty sure we've gone through Crespo. Crespo is now our star centre-back. He just looks sensational, doesn't he, as a defensive centre-back. And that's what we've moved to now as well. Our centre-backs are playing as just centre-backs. We're not playing ball-playing centre-backs anymore. I just want us to be defensively solid in the Champions League and then see how we go from there. A powerful centre-back. We'll look at the free heading, marking and tackling. He looks sensational, right? Um, he's got great determination, great positioning. Um, he's obviously got very good bravery, which is important. Decision making is decent. He's got decent work rate as well. Um, and just in the air, he's an absolute monster and great strength. Um, I feel like that he's going to be sensational for us. But lucky last, it's Thomas Bata. And what a player. We, were ex we signed him with the expectation of losing Steven, and we're going to keep the same system. Once we kept Steven and we have this guy, him, yes, him, for 2.7 mil, him, yes, at 18, not a problem. Thank you very much for coming. That's a wonder kid, everybody. Um, he was um, sensational to pick up. I'm now playing him and Steven alongside each other. And if you just think about, what about Pereira, your other wonder kid? The Brazilian one you bought last year. Don't worry, he's there too. Um, playing him as a Mazala. Now, look, when he joined us, he was, wanted to play as a Mazala on support. He's actually dropped off that a little bit. He didn't want any promises. He just wanted to come in right, on a rotation contract, I reckon. Um, we made him a key player, and we're just like, yeah. This is the big one, is that he has a foreign release fee for 5.5 mil. I really want to offer him a new contract, and apparently we can, but as you can see, 5.75 mil. So we're not going to offer him a new contract just yet. Um, we're going to wait until his agent either leaves or, you know, lets us get a better contract in him um, because we want to keep him for as long as possible. It's the only thing that I'm really upset is that on that contract, we do, he just locks it in. Um, most... Players haven't done that so far. But look, as a Mazala, ninth determination. Look at the physicals. It's just sensational. Obviously, he's got decent dribbling, finishing, and first touch for great long shots. Passing and vision of 17 and 16. That is a ball-playing uh, midfielder. Have you ever seen one in your life? Um, he's obviously got good tackling as a Mazala as well. And very good anticipation, bravery, you know, anticipation and bravery for a Mazala. Um, and then the rest of it is all good there too. He just looks sensational. 
absolute um, potential to grow. Um, looking pretty much just as good as Steven. Steven apparently slightly better than him, and there we go. Um, there we are there, but that's all our signings, right? Um, we did make a staff signing, and we're just gonna go to him here. Um, we actually got a new assistant in, I said goodbye to Tongu, um, only because, look, our performances weren't great. I didn't want to blame anybody, but I just thought when I saw this guy come up, um, you know, 17 man management, 16 judging the ability and potential, he's a pretty much a long-term assistant for us, but Tongu was only like 13, 12, um, 14, 14 here. It's not too much of a jump up, but it's a better jump up in terms of um, having a better assistant here at the club. So I've decided to go get in, um, Pab Pablo, um, it's hard finding good staff for us because our board won't give us any wages for staff. Like if I go to increase scout salaries, right, we'll go like that, and they'll just tell me that club levels are spending way too high. Even though in the finances we've got seventeen mil, we can obviously spend a little bit more in terms of our staff. But that's generally how the stave is. That's the sort of signings we made. It was good, right? Before we get into what we're going on, right, we're going to go to team report and go to team depth, right? Um. As you can see, that's for the four two three one. We're not playing the four two three one at the moment. We're playing something else. But as you can see up front, we've got Flem and Filipov, which is great. Schultz at somehow is only three star, even though let's be honest, he probably should be more than three star. Looking at that, he looks sensational, growing. Um, is he still wanted by Monaco? He's now wanted by a whole heap of clubs. It was just Monaco before. And thank God he doesn't have a release fee. Um, there we go. Obviously, um, Goodison and Callis. Callis is growing sensationally well. I'm actually training to play Mazala as well, and he can obviously play that. Look at him. He looks sensational. Um, the Australian from the Centre of Excellence, wanted by Chelsea at the moment. Um, we've just tied him down to a new contract at 2029 with a 45 mil release fee. So Chelsea, if you want to make, meet that by all means. Um, Stein, Stein playing as a right winger. We know that Stein is. We know Eastberg's still here at the club. Um, Steven, Pereira, Brata, Brian, Bojan. We've got plenty of depth at centre mid, um, which is good. Um, it's Now at centre back, we've actually got options that are free star and better in prospects. Now gone from being our first choice to our least, um, um, our last choice for centre back. Um, Pereira can apparently play there too, which is great. Um, and Cardozo and Wagner. Um, this is the main reason why we haven't sold Muta either. Is Muta for look as much as he makes mistakes and he does my head in. You can't buy a goalkeeper better than him. He's happy at the club. Um, his positioning now has gone up again. I just have full faith that the kid will come good. He's only twenty three. We've got long term goalkeeper as well, so we didn't panic. Like I said, we we're going to panic and we we're going to sell everybody and go buy new people. This is the position where I'm really worried. Uh, but when you go to Lucas Lotbat and you go to find similar players and I untick that, just look, no one comes up. He's got good bravery, tackling, teamwork, work rate, pace, acceleration, natural fitness, everything you want. Um, if I wanted to really be picky, I would add like crossing in there too. And if we go down like 12s, you eventually get people. But people that are interested in you are like, look, Apart from this guy here from Bristol, who we're never going to sign because he's got low determination. No one really wants to come to us. Um, Nickel Bestie doesn't look as good as him. He looks great. He looks, yeah, good, but not as good as Lucas Lockback. So you might as well keep us Lucas Lockback here, who's going to be Icelandic in two years' time. So then he can play for Iceland in the World Cup, which we're obviously still looking to try and get the Icelandic job. Um, so the depth's okay. Learson's growing, obviously. He'll, he'll eventually fill into that role very well. Um, he just got found out in the Champions League. Lucas love that, unfortunately, doesn't like big games. So it doesn't help us. But I think Lucas at the moment is a decent player for the league. And we're not going to be rushed into finding a left back. We've looked for mountains of left backs. And we haven't found anyone that's good enough to come in and do the job that is obviously willing to talk to us. Um, but that's really how the team, in terms of depth, looks. And we've actually got very good depth here. I feel like this squad is good. We've had a couple of players in key areas. who are doing all right. But we've changed it tactically. And that's what we're playing now. Um, Pereira's obviously um, now doesn't care if he plays as a deep line playmaker and defend or whatever he plays um, because obviously we signed him on a new contract, he was happy with the club, so we're now playing him as a regista and he can play very well there as a regista. Um, we're just now playing 4 3 3 with a DM, um, two centre mids that can obviously play very well together, um, two full backs on attack and then two defensive centre backs. If we go to team instructions, what we've changed slightly is we're playing on a higher line but keeping a normal tempo instead of trying to play a bit too fast, looking to try and keep the ball a little bit more, um, playing on retained possession on a mixed, um, still looking to play out, still looking for the overlap, still looking to work the ball into the box, and still looking to be expressive, still looking to close down, um, but we're not getting stuck in either because we're obviously getting a lot of needless yellow cards in the other system, the 4 2 3 one We've also gone to play instructions. We actually tell John to stop distributing to our, both our fullbacks that split. Um, both our centre-backs that split. I just want our centre-backs just to defend and not make mistakes. So now what I've decided to do is I've told Jon um, or Robert to just go and distribute to either full-back and get them looking forward and trying to play forward. Just second-line balls, right? And if the second-line ball isn't on, just go find a man. If it's up the field, I don't care. Um, 
everyone else is doing all right. If we're in that system as well, we're actually playing um, wingers that actually want to come inside a little bit and operate. We've got him on roam on position a lot. Um, so then the, our fullbacks can get space to get up. Um, playing with a Regista instead of um, everything else. Um, Pereira likes to get forward, which is great. Games will dominate. I'm guessing in games where we're up against bigger, bigger sides, I'm definitely tempted to play in deep line, play make on defend. Just tell him to sit, allow our fullbacks to go and defend with free um, back there so we don't get hit on the counter too much. But yeah, our team's pretty good. Um, in terms of that's really it in terms of what's happened, I feel like tactically we're in a better spot. I feel like the players we brought in are sensational. Um, Filipov's still growing, but he hasn't started too well in pre-season. Um, it's going to say here they scored three, he scored two in the final. Apart from that, he was on goal scoring drought. Clement's Clement. Um, if there's anyone that we need to sing our praise of preseason, so far the preseason player of the season has been um, Callis playing as a Mazala. Every time he's played, he scored, he scored a hat trick in the thing. Um, and M. Pate deserves a shout out as well, the 19 of South African. He was complaining about first team football. Um, he was obviously now worried that we're phasing him out. We're not. We're trying to get him as much time as possible here. Um, we've obviously signed him in the one for homegrown talent. He's been growing. He's been playing well, but he's playing second fiddle. Um, Yagya keeps getting injured at the moment, so really dropping him off. But I'm obviously very disappointed that Yagya got sent off in the la last game that we saw against Everton, which is needless. Or maybe it wasn't Everton. Maybe it was the last game against Inter. Um, he just got himself sent off. It was one of the games, right? Um, keeps pulling his hamstring. I just feel like um, even though he's 21 at 3.1 um, mil, I feel like Mtate has a bit more potential and a bit more about him and more suited to playing in our sort of system. Very determined, very strong, got great work rate. I want to put a lot of time and effort into Mtate and see if he really can grow into the player that we want him to be. Um, Yag Yag can, can be second choice. Um, I'm, I'm tempted to say when Pereira can't start big games because he's injured or he's suspended, Yag Yag starts and still kept Mtate on the bench, but that's really it. Um, Victor Hugo is now going to be second choice. I feel like Victor Hugo, when we're playing as more um, defensive solid centre-backs, um, can play the role very well. We just need a bit more pace, a bit more fitness. But very good in the air, very good strength. Um, very similar to um, to Crespo, just not as good as Crespo just yet, but has the potential and is apparently our key. Um, still think he's our um, top prospect, which is good. But that's really what the team looks like. In terms of what we're going to play today, is Alt's actually going to start and Prospect's going to go to the bench because Victor picked up a knock. Um, he didn't play the final either. He's trying to get back to training. Um, we're not going to risk him, obviously, in this game here. But we're obviously going to play Lucas in goals, Muta, Alt, Crespo, Cardozo, Pereira, Brata, Steven, Schultz, who's been sensational, Stein, and Filipov. Um, that's the team we're going to play today. We're going to submit the team there, and we're going to move forward against ST um, in the cup game. Um, the way we've been playing a lot has been pretty good. Um, this is the first time I think we've come up against 4 4 2. A lot of times when um, Iceland are playing like 4 3 3, um, playing three at the back. Um, I think it's the first time we've seen 4-4-2 this preseason. I think that was preseason games. First time that an Icelandic club played 4-4-2. They do play it a lot in the league. I just haven't seen it in preseason. Um, obviously, our team looks quite strong on paper. We can make five subs. Um, and the bench is now looking a lot stronger as well. When you have Callis Gunnarsson, um, Gunnarsson can play either wing. Um, that's why I'm quite happy. You don't see Isberg on the bench. Is that either wing, Gunnarsson can play, play quite well with his pace. Just needs a bit more crossing. But he's been coming off the bench, playing as a winger, looking sensational, getting um, goals and assists. Um, so I'm pretty happy um, where we are at the moment as well. I feel like there's a lot of depth here, and we're doing quite well. We're favourites for a reason. Go out there and do it, lads. I'm happy with how it's gone. Um, as always with these transfer sort of specials, I'm very happy to um, do a lot of talking and then get through a game quite quickly. As you can see, it's already been 18 minutes of just pure talking. Um, I know there's a lot of people that just like to watch gameplay. I know there's a lot of people that love this sort of stuff, like myself, when I watch YouTube. I'm like, work the space when it goes in depth. I love it. Um, but there we are. Um, look, absolutely, I feel that a club, you know, ambitions are being met, even though they're not. I'm just going to say that I would consider us title favourites, put the pressure on the boys, but they should know they should be winning the title from now. As we walk out here at the, um, it's not the HK Stadium, it's the Iceland Eating International Stadium. I don't know what it's called. If someone from Iceland watches this, please let me know. I probably can find out if I really wanted to, but let's just get into it. Um, I'm looking for Filippo of the really improve in this system where he's not playing with someone behind him. Um, Flamen has come in, and every time Flamen's played, he score goals as well. And there we are. As uh, Stevens for um free kick is falling short to Stein. Stein from distant hits it, deflected. Oh, it's all offside. Don't worry about it. Hit Crespo and then fell back to Oh, It wasn't really going to be a chance, was it? I'm expecting us to go out there and dominate, looking for us to keep the ball. Playing on a normal tempo, we don't rush it too much, which is good. Just looking to work the space. Pereira does lose out, though, but wins it back, which is good. That's the thing about Pereira. I do want to see him aggressively push forward up in games like this. Stein gets on the ball. Can we whip in a brush towards Filipov? Filipov there can't really get there. Cordozo now. Cordozo pushing up high. Barta, Steven. Oh, it's another poor ball, but Brata will get there first. Well done, son. He finds Steven again. Steven loses out again. Wins it again. Really, really high. What a flick. That deserves a goal. What was that from Schultz? That was absolutely delicious. Just a little back heel flick through ball. Straight to Filipov's foot. The effort was good, but unfortunately for us, didn't go in. Stein there first time, never going to score. Usually those highlights lead to nothing. Um, 
It was a little bit too, you know, it wasn't fluid in that sort of piece of play that that highlight. You know, a lot of balls hitting feet and stuff like that. I do get worried because it's a new system that we will all get found out occasionally in the league that where we don't just click. Um, I feel like it, obviously it takes time of football manager for a system to be learnt in that. The problem, there are promising sides. We haven't lost in pre-season, obviously. Um, but I reckon there's been games in pre-season where we haven't looked at our best and I feel like there's a little bit where we couldn't be getting done. Brato's effort, okay, that's a defense, that's a goalkeeper mistake. I wasn't expecting that to lead to anything. Philip got the ball from the throw. He's laid it back and Brato just hit one and that was pretty tame. The keepers kind of let it go under him. But one new up, obviously I'll take that, which is great. Um, Cardozo here, Pereira, back to Cardozo. Cardozo found Filipov, who's roaming from his position, which is fine. Um, his ball finds Brata. Brata first time. Really, the keeper should be dealing with that. But, you know, we'll take what we get. Highlight from the goal. Usually means ST are going to probably score. Um, but we'll wait and we'll see. BJ's ball inside there. He finds um, Gujuk. Um, there we go. Finds Hakuson. Hakuson's ball there. The Jonasson. That's some really good stuff from ST. And they got... Um, Men forward here, Gudjik's ball in. Can we really stop the cross coming in? We can't. Header cleared away. Maybe we can go on the break. Schultz in now. He's looking to run, but obviously can't beat his man. It was the right idea was to drive into that sort of space. Just couldn't get there. Um, Alt's going to get on that. And can we keep it now? Lucas Lotba, he finds um, Steven. Steven's ball inside. Instead, no, he just turns and runs with it. His ball finally does find Filipov, who can hold it up and play very well in the system. Finds Steven. Um, Steven's ball finds Filipov. Filipov there. His ball finds Stein. Stein, one touch. Cut it, son. Instead, he shoots. Why did he shoot? I uh, See, a lot of the time, I will say, Stein does cut that, but he does shoot straight at the keeper. Just better off cutting it there. Um, good play. That's what I want to look for, is just us building it up nice, you know, looking for the right pass, not forcing it too much, and really allowing Philippe to go and use his big body and hold the ball up and play people in. Um, Vartas picked up a stub toe. He'll be okay. Only one new up here at halftime. Um, once again, because we're not going like all out attacking as we usually do, um, we're not expecting us to go dominate games. I expect us to go score goals when we are um, when we are on top of play um, teams, but not like crazy amounts. Not like the eights or seven nils where we're playing on a controlled system. Everyone pushing right up and playing very stuck in, looking to press. We all, we still are looking to press. Anyhow, Filipov, that's a great ball inside. Stein's going to finish that. No, he won't. Another save. Stein not having the best of days out here, but that's what I like. See how we've got wingers that roam now, is that they will look for pockets of space. Lays that back to Stein. Stein lies to Steven. Steven Pereira. Do we find a shot off? We don't in the end. It's going to get cleared. It's probably going to be half time. Oh, maybe the highlight will continue here for ST. Um, would be a horrible time to concede. Stein gets up, finds Brata. Brata, it's fine. They're going to be half time. Dominating the game. I haven't put our chances away, which has happened before um, for us. Hoping that we continue. As we can see, we're going very heavily down the right-hand side. I haven't got exploit the right-hand flank on. I think just Stein's just having a very good day. Don't get complacent out there. They will seem motivated. Um, worried that Brata's stub toes can turn into something more, but we'll keep him out there for a little bit. He's the new man. Everybody wants to see the new man um, playing. Steven there. It's probably going to be the end of the highlight. It is. And we'll see if there's another highlight that comes around. Brata not looking his best. I'm thinking about Callus. Callus has been sensational. I think we're going to make that change very soon. I'm going to wait for this highlight and see where we go. Can we press in here and win it? It's a good ball through the middle of the park. And we do press in and Lucas Lobat does the job. Brata finds Steven. Steven, his ball switched out, does find um, Stein. Stein finds Pereira. I've seen Cardozo bomb on. Can we find him? He does look for Cardozo. Cardozo, he looks for Stein. Instead, it looks for Filipov. Filipov gets there. Filipov, first time near post. Keeper probably should have dealt with that one as well. But we're turning him up. There we go. Filipov there. I thought the ball was meant for Stein. I probably, it probably was meant for Stein, to be honest. You just saw Cardozo bomb on. Pereira with that vision of passing. Find Steven. Steven there. It's a nice little switch click ball. Cardozo's first on. That's definitely meant for Stein. But Filipov's used his strength. Got in front of his man. Shielded the ball nicely. He hit that one first time. And that's a good goal. Um, highlight from kickoff. We'll wait and see what happens. I was about to change and bring Callis on. Um, we'll do it after this highlight. Hopefully it's not for them. Hopefully we can press in and win the ball nice and high. It's a long ball. Surely we can deal with that. We've got players that can. Um, it's a good header by Alt and Steven picks it up and can drive into the space. His ball is poor though. Um, I wouldn't say our midfield's had the best of days, um, but at the same time, we are winning too. We're being quite comfortable. But Magnus in here, he's got a chance to whip on a decent ball. Instead, it's deflected. Pereira there. Defensive mistake. No, it's not. Crespo um, there. He finds Steven and now we can build again from the back, which is good. Just, just... Nice, simple passing. Steven's beaten one, but unfortunately he doesn't beat the second one. Um, don't mind when Steven does go on his runs. He's definitely good at dribbling, um, but needs to do better. Augustin with a chance. Do Augustin. Muto with a good save. We're going to pause that game. That should be the end of the highlight. We're obviously going to see the corner highlight. Bratz is obviously injured. We're going to get Callis on to keep learning that Mazala role. He's quite good in it. 55 minutes played. A change gets made. Don't even get to see the corner, which is great. Um, Going to move forward here. We obviously can make five changes. In the 64th minute, we'll look to make a couple more. Filipov's had a good game. We're going to get Flamen on so he doesn't get um, 
you know, thing. Um, Stein's not having the best of games. We are going to play Gunnarsson. We're going to play him as an inside forward on attack because he's probably a little bit natural to it. I think that's the only couple changes. We can make two more. We'll see what other changes we can make in a second. In the end, Schultz's corner is pretty poor, but he'll get back on that. And Schultz with another good cross. That's a very good cross towards Pospet. Doesn't win it. Gunnarsson from distance. Gunnarsson not too far away um, for half a second. He just thought if he could score, it'd be great. Um, Hart straight away, though, and it'll be a goal kick and see what if we can get on the board. Or um, Lucas Lope gets up, but his head is not look great. It doesn't find um, Stephen. I think that's the one thing about playing a cam is when we do win the ball, just linking up in between the lines, it's a little bit hard. Um, when we do get the ball to the feet of our centre, um, our two pocket players, the 10 and the 8, if you like to say, um, we definitely do look the goods in terms of keeping it, looking for our wingers, wingers getting to the half spaces, it's pretty good. Um, the Mazzala role I really do like as well because they do find space pretty well, like Callis should find some space here now, um, just in between the lines somewhere. See, he just comes in nicely and just looks inside. And see, now we're just out on the other side if we want to play it. Instead, he looks for the men. So we stay on this side here. We'd love us to see us switch it out to the other side. Thank goodness we'll play an early cross. Schultz, he will get up. Maybe, no, he won't. Steven will head down. Callis, he finds for the men. For the men won't turn. Schultz, he will hit that one. And that's a goal. Pretty lucky in the way that's gone in. Um, because the game's pretty much over, we're going to bring in Tete to keep him growing and play him on a um, ball-winning support role. Um, we could maybe bring Wagner on to keep his... Um, his we could bring Brian on. And we could make one more change. Um, we're just going to wait and see if there's an injury and then wait to the 75th minute and maybe make a change like that. But we've done pretty well in the game, up 3-0. I wouldn't say that we've been clinical. I wouldn't say we've been at our best. If we look back at all three goals, we've, there's been an element of luck, especially in this one here. Um, you know, it hasn't been quite fluid. Obviously, it's just, it's good play, but then Fleming gets done. It just falls to Schultz. I feel like when you're a bigger side in a game, same thing goes when we play Barca and that. You know, a lot of luck goes to the bigger sides. That's just a bit of luck. Get to the 75th minute. Um, we could bring um, Stephen off. But we're going to keep him out there. I'm feeling like Wagner needs some game time. Plus, it keeps him happy. He's obviously still a quality player for us. Is Jimmy Wagner. We do love him here at the club. We'll bring Wagner on, and that's going to be our last change. Hoping for no injuries now. Dominated the game. Kept the ball relatively well. 58% um, possession. Nothing to be scoffed at. But yet again, obviously, we do want to keep the ball a lot better than this. Um, we're going to move into... Um, at a time, and it should be all over now. Callis is going to head that one there back to Gunnison. Gunnison's cross should be dealt with, and Tate gets up, but it's headed away by the centre back. Will the corner come back in? That should just go for full time. They do. Filipov apparently is going to get man of the match. Definitely deserves it. We win the cup again. Watch new. It's only the pre season cup. We won't go too um, on about it. Um, but if you look at the analysis now, um, if you look at us now, or you can obviously see that um, we keep the ball in a lot of areas. Essentially, we do quite well. Um, as a 4-3-3, three, three, it's a very weird 4-3. Um, Stephen wants to drop a little bit deeper, but I don't mind when Callis or uh, um, Bracha does push further forward. Both fullbacks. We're keeping our shape quite well. When we played the 4 3 one, we looked at that. It was a bit hit and miss in terms of our shape. There's a lot of people everywhere. Center, you know. I just like the way that we are um, with, with a way out the ball there. I'm very happy the way these guys play. We go back to the analysis. We go to team analysis. You know, We go to passes and we select that. You know, We played 733 completed passes. All right, for HK, 441, there we are. 441 completed passes for a nice name inside is quite good, and we're just keeping the ball very, very well. Um, tempting to see where our keep is going, obviously, as well, but we'll do that later on, and I'll do that off stream, um, off stream, off the, um, off YouTube, there we go. Um, we're gonna tell them that, look, we're quite happy with how they performed, everybody performed quite well. I'm expecting the league to be another walkover, but um, we'll be back for the Champions League when we do. I'm pretty sure because of how, um, Gonna do the thing. He's a top quality goalkeeper. Maybe if we really pump up Schultze, um, Schultze, um, if we really pump up Muta, he won't start conceding silly goals. Um, in terms of moving back, it's obviously gonna be for the Champions League. Um, only thing is with the Champions League is that it's not over yet, so we don't know when our next games are gonna be. Um, I'm pretty sure also for this season we have to come back in in the third qualifying round instead of the last qualifying round because of our um, our league dropped off slightly. It's now like 16th instead of being 12th. Um, not our league, but the um, Icelandic um, qualification places. Um, we're 16th, so we do drop out, and no one, we don't have an Icelandic club now in Europe, um, in the Europa League now for um, the next season, which is a shame as well. Um, but, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be the end of episode 43. Hopefully, you've enjoyed. I hope, um, as many of you will know, we do stream quite a lot of uh, stuff on Twitch for um, HK. Check us out um, on Twitch by following us in using the link in the description below. If you've enjoyed the episode, give it a like. If you like this episode, where I just go on a massive rant, a oh, rant, or a bit of a ramble about how the club's looking. Um, Please feel free to as well. Um, on the Twitch thing that we did last night that everybody was quite enjoying, we'll, you know, people commenting their favourite um, um, favorite Premier League clubs and then we're looking at their business over the past, you know, 
so many years. We looked at Spurs, and Spurs like sold Deli Ali on for 166 mil like not too long ago to City. He's 29, looks fantastic, Deli Ali. But you know, we're doing stuff like that and seeing where players what where players ended up from certain clubs. Like Hugo Luis ended up playing his whole entire career at, uh, at Spurs, and now the goalkeeper coach at Spurs, which I thought was quite nice. Um, and you know, stuff like that. So if you're interested in interacting in the stream, we don't just just stream and just talk and that's it. We interact with the chat. We talk about football. We talk about Pochettino if he's the best manager in the Premier League. Then we had a Spurs fan come and follow us and talk to a lot of Spurs, um, which I don't mind talking about other clubs apart from Liverpool. It was great. Trying to try to tell him that I think um, Guardiola and Klopp were better managers than Pochettino, but Pochettino's entirely far away. You know, obviously we've seen Klopp do stuff in Germany. We've seen Guardiola win everything. We haven't seen Pochettino win something, but Pochettino's done a lot for Spurs. Look, we're rambling again. But that's the sort of things that happen on Twitch. Um, if you're really interested in that, like, like I said, follow us in the link in the description below on Twitch. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed the episode. Go watch the previous ones if you haven't. Um, go give it a follow. Go give us a subscribe on YouTube so you stay more notified. No, so you get notified when we do upload videos as well. Enjoy the rest of your day, day or night, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are watching this from. This is Damien signing off YouTube, and I'm looking forward to this another HK Champions League run. And we're just hoping, we're hoping just to finish third in a group, just so we can get some more um, European knockout football. So instead of doing episodes like this in April, we're doing games that actually really matter. Enjoy the rest of your day or night, ladies and gentlemen. This is Damien, and goodbye.